So a gentleman donated on Patreon and he asked me to make a video about my predictions for the Winds of Winter. And then I realized that I don't have a whole lot of predictions for the next book, besides Jon Snow coming back, but we all know that's gonna happen. So I tried to contact this gentleman and unfortunately he deleted his account. I had no way of contacting him, so I hope he doesn't mind that I'm tweaking his suggestion or what he asked for just a little bit and doing my fear predictions for the winds of winter or what i fear might happen in the next book in relation to what we've already seen on the show i'm a strong believer that what happens on the show doesn't mean it's going to happen in the books so again just take this with a grain of salt this is just my fears after watching the latest couple seasons where the books are heading so based on the show here are my fears of what could happen in the winds of winter Number one, Barristan goes out like a bitch in the Battle of Fire. In the Winds of Winter, Barristan realizes he has to go out and face the enemy threat as he can no longer stay holed up in the City of Marine, waiting for Daenerys to return. The enemies basically assured this by catapulting corpses infected with the Pale Mare into the city. As of right now, we know Barristan rallies the men and gives an epic speech on the eve of the battle. Last we know, Barristan orders for the sound of the attack. Now we know in season 5 of Game of Thrones, Barristan went out like, again, like a bitch to the Harpies. Something a lot of us were really upset about, including the actor who played Barristan who wrote a letter begging the showrunners not to kill his character, and then when they did, he did a very, very bitter ask me anything. So based on how quickly they got rid of Barristan in the show, and the fact that Daenerys is already heading to Westeros at the end of season 6, I have this gut-wrenching feeling that Barristan doesn't make it out of the Battle of Fire. Daenerys eventually comes back, she gets her dragons, she defeats the enemies outside the gates, and then she just heads over to Westeros and Barry never gets to see her claim the throne, if there's anything left of it. Number two, Jon comes back with no consequences. I'm not a fan of on Jon by any means, I want Jon to come back and be Jon, but maybe a bit more bitter. I'd like there to be more consequences than he's just a bit more moody. We're used to moody Jon. I'm hoping in the Winds of Winter when he comes back, he's a lot more messed up. Maybe he spent time in his direwolf while his body was dead, and staying in an animal for such a long time tweaked him just a little bit. I do get he did appear messed up in the show, but I want a little bit more angst. Oh my god, more angst from Jon Snow in the books. Can you imagine that? I want a little bit more consequence to him coming back and I want to see him more changed and be inside his brain and him trying to work through his first resurrection. Number three, Stannis loses the Battle of Ice and the Boltons remain in Winterfell. Season five of Game of Thrones really messed me up. A lot of shit happened that just didn't sit right with me and made me very afraid for the next book. Seeing Stannis lose the battle against Winterfell in Season 5 made me terrified for Stannis and the Winds of Winter. Not that I'm a huge Stannis fan. I like the guy, I'm just not banking for him to ever sit on the Iron Throne. I have to believe that even if Stannis loses the Battle of Ice in the next book, he doesn't lose it so pathetically like he did in the show. That he actually has a fighting chance and uses the amazing strategic mind he's known for to give the Boltons a run for their money. As long as Stannis puts up at least a decent fight, I'll be happy. I just don't want him to go out like he did in the show. And I have this feeling that he might win the battle, but then something really tragic happens to him afterwards. And for those of you show watchers that are watching this and you're going, fuck him, he burned his child, he has not burned his child in the books yet, okay? So back off the manis. You back right the fuck off. Number four, Stannis allows his daughter to burn. The showrunners for Game of Thrones did say that George confirmed that Shireen is basically sacrificed and burned alive at one point in the series, but they didn't say whether Stannis approved of it. Melisandre isn't with Stannis in the books right now, she's with Shireen at the Wall. So one theory is, is that Melisandre does burn Shireen, but it isn't to melt snow, but to resurrect Jon Snow, or for some other reason, and that Stannis has no idea that she's going to go forth with doing it. I'm really, really hoping it's not Stannis that orders his daughter to be burned in the books. After all, he's away from her and that it's just Melisandre that gets the idea in her head in order to resurrect Jon Snow or perhaps bring about some other effect. After all, pray harder. 
Number 5. The Blackfish Simply Disappears and Nothing Happens to Him Brendan Tully had a different fate in the books than the show. In the show, the Siege of River Run happens, Jamie Lannister takes it over, and the Blackfish dies fighting. In the books, Edmure gives the castle up to Jamie, but gives Brendan enough time to swim under the water gate and escape. From there, we don't know what Brendan is planning. With him being killed off in the show, my personal wishful thinking is that they just didn't want to deal with any small plot he may have had in the books. Maybe we hear rumors of the Blackfish gathering men or taking back little castles here or there. Which I get would be too much to deal with him in the show with as few episodes as we have left. I just hope this doesn't mean that Brendan just disappears in the books and we never see him again. Number 6. Daenerys doesn't have some of her father's madness in her. The showrunners for Game of Thrones have been very firm that Daenerys doesn't have any of her father's madness in her. That kinda looks like she's enjoying roasting people alive, like her father liked to, but whatever. I like Daenerys, I like her character, but I don't want her to be this clean-cut white knight that saves the Seven Kingdoms. The showrunners are so adamant that Daenerys is not a mad queen, and that just kind of, I don't know, upsets me a little bit. I want a little, a little bit of crazy in her. I want her to go a little bit too far and have to be dialed back. I just don't want this beautiful queen ruling the Seven Kingdoms or what's left of it. I want some goddamn crazy fire and blood. Number seven. Blood Raven isn't up to anything and is just trying to help out Bran like a good buddy. There are a lot of theories on what Blood Raven is exactly up to. A lot of them are a bit. mmm. evil. In the show, Blood Raven taught Bran some stuff and just died. My wish is that Blood Raven doesn't just help Bran out and then die from a Bran whoopsie, but that Blood Raven has some darker intentions going on that Bran slowly discovers. Honestly, I think it would be boring if he was just a straight, oh, I'm just trying to save humanity guy. I want a little bit more darkness and plotting and perhaps something about him that Bran is like, ooh, maybe you aren't the good guy after all and I need to get away from you. Number eight, Fire and Blood Dorn plot, all for nothing. Sand snakes take over. Show Dorn has me absolutely frightened about book Dorn. Was the slaughter of Dorne and his children an indication that fire and blood is all for nothing? That the Sand Snakes are rebelling and want to fight, and Dorne wants to fight, and they don't have time for Dorne's slow maneuvering and cautious nature? And that before fire and blood can come to fruition, the Sand Snakes take over and rule Dorne. Dorne then joins the fray. The Prince of Dorne never gets to see his plot fully come to fruition. We know from the last book and even the preview chapters that Dorne is going to get involved, I just kind of worry how exactly they're going to go about it, and I really hope the Sand Snakes just don't murder the Martell family, which would be kind of odd if they got rid of certain members of the family, to be honest. Number 9. Marjorie loses her trial and is put to death. Marjorie's death in season 6 was a shocker. It now has me convinced Marjorie isn't making it until the end of The Winds of Winter alive. They changed the trial around a bit in the show, but in the book she's still awaiting her trial to prove her innocence. I think based on the show, we're gonna have to say goodbye to Marjorie pretty soon. I'm thinking this means she doesn't actually win her trial and she's declared guilty and they execute her. Which is so sad. Poor Marjorie. Number 10. Davos arrives at Skagos to find that Rickon is simply dead. This is part of a dark theory that has been around for a while. Rickon is on Skagos, but he's already dead. With how easily they killed him in the show, it almost seemed like an attempt to shorten a storyline that ends very abruptly, and with his death anyways. My fear is, is that Rickon never makes it back to Winterfell in the books, and what happens is that Davos goes to retrieve him, and he's already dead. And since the showrunners didn't want to have this whole subplot of Davos going to an island to retrieve the boy for him just to be dead and possibly infuriate uh, show-only watchers, instead they decided to have him go with the Umbers and then be promptly killed by Ramsay. I'm really hoping this doesn't mean that Rickon is just straight super dead in the books. Super dead. So those are my fear predictions based off the last couple seasons of Game of Thrones. Again, the show isn't the books and the other way around. Characters that are dead in the show aren't dead in the books, so there's a ton of wiggle room. But what are your fear predictions for The Winds of Winter based off of the past couple seasons of Game of Thrones? So thank you so much for watching. Please like the video. Hopefully I satisfied the gentleman's requirement. If not, I really apologize. Please come back for more Star Wars, comics, Game of Thrones, anything sci-fi fantasy related.